Hi everyone. I uh, don't know if anyone's around this morning or wants to tune in, but I thought I would do a demo of something really different um, in a number of ways. Uh, normally I do either pieces that are fully inked in black ink and then I have color added or just on a watercolor, but today I'm going to be doing kind of a hybrid uh, of that process. So uh, these little pictures you see here are printed out for my own reference. These are paintings I've already done. Uh, these actually all went to the same Patreon subscriber who loves uh, Kitsune, which are Japanese fox spirits. So they wanted kind of uh, a light and shadow version in both kind of the female fox form and the kind of full body fox form. So I've done both shadow ones and I've done the female light one. So today I'm going to be working on the fox version, which is, you can see, is sort of... Uh, very roughly and it'll look a little light till I start working on it, but it's on this paper I have here. Um, and in the case of these paintings, I did something different, which is the black borders and the red borders are very, very bold. So I actually do those with pen. Uh, I used in this case, a red Sharpie pen, it's waterproof so that I can get some very hard clean edges and I'll fill that in with red paint later. Uh, it's one of the last things I'll do because I don't want uh, the paint, the red to kind of bleed out or get smudged into anything. So I'm basically going to be doing the Fox one, but in the color scheme that matches this. And the idea is that you can, if you get the full set of prints, or if you're the person who owns the originals, you can face them like this or like this. So this is just the fourth one in the series. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, kind of convert the pencil drawing of the fox I have into a line drawing and watercolor. I've done this in a couple of other videos. And I think for this, I want a pretty light outline because again, this is going to be the, uh, this is the sun or light kitsune. So uh, it's going to be kind of a white and gold and red piece. Um, so I'm probably going to use just a little bit of very light gold uh, to do kind of the outlines for this, at least for the, the outside. And then I'll figure out the rest kind of as I go. I might use some pale blues for some of the inner stuff. And this is uh, for an awesome Patreon subscriber. I have in Germany who actually um, we we kind of threw ideas back and forth it's such an awesome collaborative thing and she subscribes to get four originals a year so this is kind of completing that year since she originally subscribed uh, for these large originals um, and the monthly subscription builds up to cover my costs and time to do it and then I get awesome creatures for my books and for some print series like this one but also get to send originals to somebody who's paying a more reasonable amount and kind of on a monthly payment plan for that. So it works out pretty well. Uh, I don't know if I need to zoom this in now. I was kind of having it zoomed out to start with. There we go. I was having it zoomed out to start with to kind of show more of the overall piece, but since I'm mainly working on the Fox portion right now, I'll, I'll just focus on that. And I think if I were not able to do writing and painting and especially didn't have the, the support of so many wonderful folks uh, who subscribe to my Patreon and they get stuff from me at events, they order from my online store or they, um, or they pledge to uh, Kickstarters that I've done. If I didn't have all that, I think um, kind of attention and, and and some of the fear and anxiety in the world would be getting to me a lot more. Uh, but this to me is such a, a sort of meditative way to just focus my mind on something else, on something that's creative. Uh, and it makes such a huge difference. So uh, when I started painting, it was now with the goal of doing this for a living. Uh, I would love to say like, I grew up wanting to be a writer um, because I've always loved writing and I've always loved art, but uh, the environment I grew up in, it wasn't that I didn't have uh, supportive people. I just was around siblings who were very much prodigies and I wasn't. So I just didn't really think I was good at anything. Uh, and then I realized the, 
but in the long run, that's been so good for me because I've had to kind of learn to be happy with myself uh, and not rely on other people loving what I do. I mean, that definitely is a perk if I get to go to an event and, and especially if I think of kids, um, if kids are a little amazed at something I've created, that's, that's really awesome for me. But I had to kind of learn to be very satisfied with myself uh, and what I could do at a young age. So art was just something uh, and writing too, that I did because I enjoyed the process uh, and it, it really helped me deal with things in my life, uh, especially difficult emotional situations, things out of my control uh, being able to draw and, and paint and write has always kind of been a coping thing. And then eventually um, I realized I could do this for a living and do something I really enjoy. Uh, that's very rewarding. And I don't make as much money at it as I would maybe at, at other jobs, uh, but I think that's okay. Um, I probably am streaming into the void right now, but I'm hoping uh, either some people will tune in later or come and play back um, this video. So try to keep it entertaining and I'm kind of trying to match the, um, the shadow Fox that I did on here. Uh, he's got a lot of, of these sort of swirly patterns. And again, this is just like a small print that I did just so I could have it for reference about trying to get another thing up on the screen, uh, because I have copies of all the, the paintings digitally for doing prints and things. So I want those swirl patterns uh, to kind of carry through in, in the fur on this fox. But again, because this fox is the light one, it's going to be um, lighter colors and stuff like that. So trying to take that into account as I plan this. And this is a little bit easier to do since I've already done one facing the other way. I know a lot about it. And the way I get them to match is I do a little bit of a cheat uh, which is that I have a digital template on the computer as to where my circle and my border should be. So they'll match pretty closely. So I print that out really lightly onto the watercolor paper. Then I do my sketch and my painting and the, uh, the ink from the inkjet printer on this paper is not permanent. So any little traces of, I don't even think you guys can see them. They're so light uh, for like placing the circle and stuff that dissolve as I'm painting. And I suppose I could trace something with a light box or do a lot of measuring and planning to get everything in the same place, but the end result is the same. So I find it's just a faster way to make sure it's going to uh, properly match the other originals in the series, at least close enough uh, that if they're hung up together, it'll look good. And foxes are not something I paint a lot, so I've definitely had a kind of a learning curve <laughs> with uh, with doing the shadow fox and then with doing the, the light one here. Uh, but I'm really happy. I actually redrew this fox face about eight times yesterday because I was so frustrated with it. And now I'm really happy with how it looks. Uh, and I am going to do kind of the traditional kitsune patterning. So it's going to have uh, some red markings on the face. Oop, well, I bumped my camera there. Sorry about that. Now I've seen a lot more people um, kind of struggling now as we're getting into a lot more time at home and a lot more people getting sick um, with depression and all that. And you got to keep in mind, we're having so much more information given to us um, than we have in the past that we're able to be more preventative, I think, and that um, we're also more aware of things like how many people are sick and death counts. And if you focus on that too much, it can just take over your life and you can end up really depressed or stressed out. And I'm not saying don't take things seriously, but uh, try to do something productive, try something new. I was talking to some wonderful people in uh, one of the DJ streams last night and I've seen a lot of uh, women posting on social media about how upset they are about not being able to get their hair done, not being able to get their nails done. Uh, and I'm so hard on my nails with um, drawing, painting, sculpting, packing things for shipping that I don't even get them done professionally. Um, I'll just paint them at home if I want if I want color. But it was pretty cool that a couple people in the chat room were saying they just got manicure kits off Amazon or other online stores and were kind of learning how to do it themselves. They they said, hey, it's a good time to learn a new skill. And I think that's such a positive approach to what's going on. But I think it's also really pointed out like 
small luxuries and being happy with yourself because we have to spend so much time on our own right now. Uh, I tend to do that anyway. I don't, I don't really think of myself as an introvert versus an extrovert because I enjoy talking to people, uh, whether it's through a Twitch stream or in person or in, in the form of chats, whatever. I enjoy it a lot. I don't, I don't really have as much social anxiety as I did when I was younger. Um, but at the same time, I don't feel like I need that interaction to survive. Um, I'm just working on getting all the tails kind of here on this guy. And I always try to make the tails kind of overlap the borders uh, on all of these. So if we look at like the, the female form of, of it, the tails kind of come down over the border at the bottom. So since this is going to be the kind of the facing piece in the full fox form, I want to get that, that right. But yeah, I don't, I don't really think, I think it's because maybe I didn't get a lot of uh, approval from adults or peers at a young age. I got picked on a lot that in long term that's helped me because I don't really feel like I need that to function in day-to-day -day life. And I think if you're used to a ton of interaction and people kind of propping you up all the time, whether you ask for it or not, that some people just, they do that. And then it can feel really weird to have that cut off. And then I'm not completely alone. I have a large family of cats <laughs> and I have uh, an awesome boyfriend. He's off getting his tire replaced and they have a whole no contact tire replacement process, but yeah, he got a screw in his tire, uh, probably from work because he works at Lowe's. And uh, we're very lucky he didn't get a flat and get stuck anywhere or that we didn't both get stuck somewhere like picking up groceries or something. So they, they were getting the tire in yesterday and he's actually having both his back tires done because they were the original ones from when he got the car and they're starting to, to wear out after seven or eight years. That's amazing they lasted that long. Um, so he's not here right now, but we've, I think, only had one slight disagreement or conflict in three weeks of pretty much being around each other every day. Um, and I think that's because we're both just people who we do a lot of stuff together. We'll watch movies, we'll eat together, but we also you know, are cool taking naps separately if we are tired at different times or um, watching different things in different rooms. If we don't feel like watching the same thing, we play video games, kind of give each other our own space, uh, which I think matters so much. And I have a, it's just a two bedroom townhouse, but it's pretty big uh, for two bedrooms. So it's easy for one of us to be in one of the bedrooms and the other bedrooms are um, the room I'm in now. It's our office and computer room. So we can be in here or in our living room. So we definitely are, are being pretty good about about that. And I know a lot of people who aren't, who are used to spending all day with their significant other are having to deal with it now. So I'm lucky I have somebody that keeps me company, keeps me from getting too lonely, but we, uh, we give each other our space too. So now I'm just waiting for some of this to dry and I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out, I don't think I want to outline the whole facial features, uh, as much in gold colors because I'm planning to uh, to have some blues for the shadows and some reds in there. So I'm just putting a little bit of blue in on the eyes. Just want to have this done enough so I can kind of either erase or at least lighten my pencil lines. Uh, I think in the face, I'm just going to lighten them. Probably go back in with the gold for the nose here. And there's so many different um, techniques for watercolor. I always encourage people starting out or even experienced artists to just try new things uh, and experiment a lot because you just don't know what's going to click for you. Uh, for some people, they want to do really detailed stuff and certain colors and certain papers work for them. I know I had to try a bunch of different things to kind of figure this out. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit. Hopefully this is going to end up being a, a cool piece. I don't think I've ever painted a white fox before. So I've painted white things before and I, again, I, I had to do kind of the, the white tails on this. So I'm going to use these same sort of, I've got some blues, pinks, uh, and a lot of golds in this. And then the background's going to have a lot of yellows and golds kind of in the circle. 
uh, behind her. And then uh, there's some a little bit of blues in the corners for shadows. So I kind of, if you're working on paintings in a series, it is useful to print out little reference cards like this if you're trying to match them. Oh, thank you. It is. I think it is. It is pretty. If I, if you just came in, um, this is what I'm doing. I have a bunch of the female Japanese fox critters that I've done. Actually, they kind of go facing like this that I've done for one of my, uh, one of my fans, they get the originals. And then these are actually pretty popular prints. Um, so I've done sun and shadow, and then we did the full Fox form of the shadow. So this is going to be the full Fox form of the light one. And if you get all four prints, you could kind of choose, do you want to hang the two women facing or pair them up or whatever way. So it's kind of a neat way to get one, get two, get four. It, it kind of works as a series that way. And I don't do, that many that are series, the Gorgon pieces I did, those are all uh, very much in a series. Just looking for an eraser. There we go. So one stuff's kind of dried more, and I'll zoom this in when I start doing more of the detail on the face. Uh, all I'm doing now is kind of removing any pencil lines because this is a lighter piece and the, the tails are going to be white. I really want to make sure uh, I don't have any weird pencils showing. So I think there's a lot, two approaches to kind of the whole stay at home thing now, which are people who are kind of hunkering down and trying not to let stuff get to them, but it does get to them occasionally. And it gets to me too a bit, but I think the other approach is like, Hey, it's a great time to learn how to paint or learn a new language or learn how to do your own nails or whatever it is. I mean, we've got, if you've got time, um, unfortunately for, for me, I don't have time uh, because this doesn't change my work because I work from home. So I'm going to be shipping out a lot of things, including hopefully this painting uh, today and tomorrow. And I want to leave some of this pencil showing because I've got very specific patterns I want to do on the face. But if there's, there's some extra around the edges here. The cool thing about using kneaded erasers, which is what this is, is that you can shape them. But also if you don't want to fully erase something and you just want it lighter, you can just press down on it and it will lift some of the pencil off the surface and leave the design there. It'll just be quite a bit lighter than it was. So it's very useful if you're doing things with watercolor. Okay, so now we have our fox here. Um, I don't think anybody can look at everything in the best light possible all the time. I think it's just not humanly possible, but um, I think there's a mile of difference between people I see who say, gosh, talk to my mom every day and we're still talking on the phone or, you know, something like that. I miss my grandparents. I miss my siblings. Then the people who were like, I miss having my hair professionally done at a salon. Nobody's seeing you right now. I mean, unless you're Instagramming or something. So <laughs> I really, I, I, don't, I don't know. I guess I just never had that focus on those little luxuries quite as much. I try to value what we do have. Um, I'm very happy that we have, so much in the way of food options. Uh, not only can I cook and we have actually been able to get pretty good groceries uh, this week, but also um, we have some amazing like delivery stuff. And I did, did what I hope is a smart thing and did the two week free trial for Grubhub plus. So I don't have to pay anything for those two weeks, but I get free delivery from a lot of places. Uh, so we kind of alternate between cooking and, and getting some takeout and stuff like that. And, We've had some, some good luck with trying some new things, a couple of bad things, but uh, mostly we've enjoyed trying some new stuff. So right now I'm going to start building kind of the circle behind it. I want it to really match kind of this one, um, not the patterns. They're all different. And I mentioned this right at the beginning of the video. This is one of the few places where you'll see that I've actually used ink as well as not using ink. <laughs> and by that, I mean, normally if I'm going to put something in ink, I outline kind of everything in the picture in ink. Um, versus only doing part of it. And in this case, I've only done the circle on the outer border with a line and I used the same Sharpie pen I always use, but I used a red one. Yeah, I'm glad we can still get food and just get all the things we really need. And I think, I hope for some people it's kind of making them have a reality check of like, what do we really need? But come on, we have the internet, we've got streaming movies, we've got music, even 10 or 15 years ago, if something like this had happened, you wouldn't be able to 
listen to music or watch someone like me stream, you know, all these things we have. So I try to just take a deep breath if I get a little too worried about stuff and kind of really look at like what we do have and some of the good things coming out of this. I know I was always really nervous about doing streams where I talk a lot because I don't think I'm a great public speaker. Um, I try to let my art kind of speak for me most of the time or my books. I, I'm a good writer. I'm just not, I don't think I'm a very like charismatic speaker, uh, like a lot of folks I know who, who do stream. And uh, this kind of pushed me to say, you know what, I, I can still talk and <laughs> yeah, I'm, it sounds terrible to say, but a lot of my friends have been saying this too. We're all kind of glad we don't have kids because um, I do have friends at home with like two children and uh, some close friends of mine, their, their twin girls were turning 12 and they were supposed to go to Disneyland and Legoland. And so not only did all of that get canceled, but they couldn't even see their friends on their birthday. And I, you know, I feel for, for the girls and for them and I hope they're doing okay. I try to check in with everybody. Um, it's harder. I think when you're a kid to, to kind of understand everything that's going on and harder for, for parents who maybe aren't used to being around each other all the time or their kids every second of every day. And, and it's a lot. Uh, I like to joke that the reason I have a successful relationship, um, the couple of things I stopped looking for one, <laughs> uh, I literally was like, I'm done. And, uh, my boyfriend actually was kind of the same way. We were friends for a while first because neither of us felt like a lot of the hoops I'd tried online dating. I'd had relationships with people I had met at events or through other things. And it just, the balance was always really off. Uh, I thought for a while, if I dated, uh, another artist or a comic book artist, that would be awesome because they couldn't have any insecurities about my creativity if they worked for someplace like dark horse and did comics for a living. And it turns out that's totally not the case. Those people can still <laughs> have a lot of issues being, being in a relationship. And I've definitely had relationships where I felt like I had to tone myself down or hold my creativity back um, because of the other person, which is not healthy. So Mine sort of happened when we weren't trying to have a relationship, which was then very natural. I mean, a great friendship first, which made a huge difference. Uh, but then also, uh, we're not married, which I think that's just a personal choice uh, in the age that we live in. Uh, we are domestic partners. We do get some benefits from that. But uh, we have separate bank accounts. And we have a, well, we're a strategy of like how we pay for some things jointly. But we have separate bank accounts. So as long as he contributes what he says he's going to contribute every month, I don't care if he wants to go blow money on video games or a VR headset or whatever. That's He's an adult. I'm an adult. We can do that. So we're not always getting on each other about kind of financial stuff. And then um, I happen to get a house that it has two bathrooms, but they're, the bathrooms are really just like sink and toilet. And then it's one shower, but the shower is in a separate room, kind of Jack and Jill. It's in the middle. Uh, and it's shared. So I only have to clean one bathroom or one shower room, but we each have our own bathroom space. And a lot of people, they can manage with one bathroom for us. I think that's a huge contributor to our relationship. Be okay that we each have like our own bathroom, we each have our own closet. Like we have space. So yeah, we got a couple people watching now, but yeah, I think um, just being respectful of your differences in any kind of relationship are cool. Like we have a lot of overlap for what we like, but then we have, um, things that, that we each like that the other one really doesn't as much. And, uh, in some cases that's been really cool because like before, uh, we were together, I really had no interest in wrestling at all. I was like, Oh, it's all fake. It's dumb. And then I learned that it's actually more like sort of like comic books, uh, because Daniel loves it so much. I learned that it's, it's really a case of, um, they create these like over the top characters and they have good guys and bad guys. And then I started to kind of see the appeal of it more, but I wasn't really into it until he showed me this little known wrestler. who's kind of been getting a little more YouTube attention recently called orange Cassidy. And he is my, one of my favorite characters from anything. Um, definitely. I will always watch like if he's got a match and Daniel puts it on, I'll watch that because he doesn't do anything. It's sort of like if you've watched the um, old MTV show Daria, he's like the wrestler version of her. He'll walk up and like very casually kick someone in the shins. And that's 
about as much effort as he'll put in, but he's so committed to the character that it's just really fun to watch. Like he'll do an entire match and he'll win, but somehow his sunglasses will stay on the whole time. And he doesn't wear like a wrestling costume. He wears like a tank top and jeans or a t-shirt of himself, which I think is great. So I never would have found any of that had I had identical interests with the person that I'm with. I think it's, it's really healthy to kind of have those differences. And I think if you're psych at home with somebody, that's the time to sort of honor those. And if you're really not into something, give them space to do their thing, you do yours, but also maybe explore some of each other's interests and, and learn more if you've got that time. Oh, he's coming along pretty good. See, I looked, it doesn't look like a lot at like this point because I'm doing all of my light colors, because if I were to go in, even with these thicker ink borders I've put in and do these reds, even dry, it's those really bright colors. The reds I'll do last because I don't want them to bleed into any of the rest of this. Um, so right now I'm just sort of building kind of the outside areas around the, the fox and I have to figure out, uh, the fox is pretty much going to have some of the colors that I used because there's no skin tones. So kind of, uh, in her dress here. So very light kind of blues and some pinks for the shading. So I'm going to start on that next and then, then I'll get into doing the, um, the reds on the fox's face. And I've had a couple people watching the stream tell me they like hearing me ramble about different stuff. So I don't know. I never thought I was that interesting, but I've done panels uh, at conventions for years and I still don't think I'm that interesting, but I think if you're, if you're honest um, and you have honest things to say, um, I'll often tell people about like bad experiences I've had with people putting down something I did when I was younger, because I think that shows that everybody has those. And that if you, if you want to make art, you should make art and it shouldn't really matter that much if, uh, if people are nice to you about it or not. Um, there we go. Yeah. You always have differences. And it was weird when I, when I lived in LA, I was in a relationship there and this is coming up on 15 years ago. And we didn't do everything together, which is kind of why we worked for a bit. Uh, we just ended up being way too, way too different in many ways in the end. But, um, but I noticed a lot of people, and I think it maybe was something of an LA trend, like they would just assume that if you're a couple, you're going to spend every Friday and Saturday night out doing something, you know, and, and I never have never done that. If I don't make plans with somebody and they want to do something else or they want to have, if I'm with a guy and he has a female friend, I'm not going to get jealous. I'm not going to get picky. You know, I think if you don't have communication and honesty and you're always worried about those things, that's not going to go well. I mean, we still have the occasional fight. We don't always get along. Usually when we fight, it's because we're tired, we're tired or sick. And then we just don't communicate well, <laughs> uh, which I think is the case. Of a lot of people, when you get tired, it's harder to understand what other people are saying and then easier to get upset and, I think everybody, you know, nobody's relationship is perfect. You're always going to have like those things, but if overall you can give each other space and still enjoy each other's company at the same time. That's, that's good. And we're not together because we can't cope with being human beings on our own. Uh, we're together because we enjoy adding to each other's lives. Now that's said, when something bad does happen, it's been really wonderful to have somebody there to support me. Um, you know, and it, it is a little less scary having somebody here. Uh, so I'm not going not going through like quarantine completely by myself. Um, and I think one of the things I feel lucky about is that I do live in Arizona because I grew up in upstate New York and looking at New York, New York's in a lot of trouble right now. They're one of the hot spot zones and they're having a lot of sickness and a lot of death. And we have it here too, but it's <laughs> maybe like one, one twentieth. I mean, it's, it's a lot less. And I, feel lucky that even in Arizona, um, Tucson is uh, nearly <laughs> do, not doing nearly as bad as Phoenix and we're, we're hanging in there. I mean, I think that's all we can do. You know, I think the thing I'm most frustrated about out of all of this is I feel like this is the most irresponsible I've ever seen the news media be. Uh, which is they're just using scare tactics. And there's a lot of people where those get to them. Uh, if you don't know a ton about how information can be presented, it's very easy to have those things get to you. Um, 
like they'll put a headline that says as many as a hundred thousand people could die. And if you actually look at the article, it's um, an infectious diseases expert. And they're saying, well, we always give the best and worst case scenario. And that number is from the worst case scenario. So while that technically could happen, the article itself, the expert says, usually what happens is somewhere between the best and worst case scenario. So I think those like scare tactic headlines get people to click links and read articles, which is great for the news profit wise. But yeah, I hear you guys up in, in Washington state have it pretty rough too. Maybe not quite as bad as New York. I know Washington and California are, are suffering too. The weird thing is if you look at like New York and Massachusetts, they're not big States. I think you could probably fit both of them inside Arizona, but some of the population is so compact and especially in New York city, the way, the way people go about day-to-day life. Oh, thank you. So for anybody who's kind of just joined in, I'll show this again. What I'm doing is I'm working on something a bit different than what I normally do. It's part of a series of paintings. So these are little uh, quick printouts I did of the first three so I can kind of match it. So these are the two um, female kitsune, um, which are Japanese fox spirits. And they still have fox ears, but they're more in like their, their female kimonoed form. And then this is the the fox version of one of them. So these are shadow and this is light. So I'm doing the matching one of the fox form to the light one. Uh, And these are for a wonderful uh, Patreon subscriber of mine in Germany. She's really cool. Uh, She said, I love Kitsune and I love like a shadow one and a light one. And we had a big discussion kind of back and forth in messages like, would we show like the full Fox form and we decided to make it a series of four paintings. So she gets one every um, four months. So this has kind of been over a year and this is the last of the series. And then we'll have to come up with what she gets after that. Uh, because I realize a lot of people, they love to have ideas or say in what they, they get, but they can't always afford to shell out a lot of money at once for a painting. Uh, so what we do for Patreon subscribers is there's a level you can be at where basically every four months it's enough for a large painting and it's something that will end up in my books and those things. Yeah. The media is feeding on the fears of everybody right now. We're talking about that a bit in chat and it's um, as a writer, it makes me angry uh, just because I think it's the worst it's ever been in the media and it's unnecessary and it's not objective. And I know none of our media is objective, but I mean, they're not even trying right now. You know, they know if they put the scariest headline possible and present only part of the facts that you're going to click that article and that's what they're doing. And even knowing facts, it reads as really terrifying. And so I think that that's kind of creating such a negative, non-objective atmosphere. Oh, and there's the garage door because my boyfriend's getting back from getting his tire replaced. So you're probably going to hear a little bit of noise from that. Well, thank you. Draco one is saying they enjoy seeing me put in the, the shadows and the figures that take shape. And when you're working with um, colors like this, where the colors, you go from light to dark because it's water-based, uh, then you're really doing, and I'm actually going to see if I can zoom this in on the face right now. So you guys can really see a little more what I'm doing. I'll see if I can get a little more light. Because it's pretty subtle because of it being a uh, a white critter. I think that's a little better. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're you're building your uh, your light colors and then your dark colors. And with many other types of paint, like acrylic or oils, you actually are usually do your dark colors first and then your light colors. Uh, so it's a little bit of a, of a difference. If you work in more than one paint form, you have to kind of switch between them. Uh, markers are also very similar to watercolor in that they are partly transparent and you can layer them kind of the way I do with watercolor. I just like um, watercolor a little bit better because it's cheaper and you can really get more subtle colors, whereas the marker, you're kind of stuck with what's in there unless you're getting custom inks. Uh, So it's harder to do like lighter and darker. I mean, you can layer to get darker, but it's harder to do that, I think. So I think now I've done enough on the face. I'm trying to make sure it's dry enough that I can kind of start to put in some of the reds. 
because if you've seen uh, Japanese fox spirits, they often have different kinds of red patterns, and I'm intentionally trying to do a different pattern for this guy than I did uh, with my shadow fox, just to make them a little different. And I thought it was such a cool idea to get asked to do like a sun and a shadow version or a light and a shadow version. I've painted Kitsune before as well. They're in one of my books. I'm trying to remember which one. <laughs> um, I think it's the fire book. I have a fire one in there, but this is a little bit different. And I think it's cool to be able to show a bit more of the gradual process on streaming because even with the how-to book you're not kind of seeing as much of that build up and <laughs> I think that's what leads people to think that watercolor is very difficult or that it's just a form of magic and some people know how to do it and others don't and this way I can kind of show nope it's just a process where you you work away at it um, and the more you do it the more kind of the, the rules of the paint you understand and eventually it turns into a finished painting but it's very much a uh, a process that takes time and time and an effort but i think it's worth it and i don't know where the myth that watercolor is the scariest form of paint came from i mean i think maybe some people are more predisposed to do a light to dark versus a dark to light so they might pick oils or watercolor depending on that but I don't think it's scarier to use one than the other painting is just a skill to learn like anything else <laughs> now on my shadow one I did not do because it's kind of a spirit I didn't do like pupils in the eyes I don't know if you guys can see that so I wanted something similar on here but I do want to make sure there's enough shadow and kind of atmosphere uh, with the eyes. So I'm going to work on that a little bit. I think I have a good orangey color I can kind of bring in here, create a glow. And right now I'm just trying to make sure I use a red enough red, <laughs> kind of layering it on here to make it a little brighter. I don't want to overdo it, but I don't think it needs to be too delicate either. So kind of a learning experience. If anybody has questions, comments, feedback, I always say that on my streams, but I am super happy to answer them. I'm probably going to not finish this entire thing on the stream because it's a lot of work and I'm getting hungry and get to order lunch soon. So <laughs> that might be happening. I think it's already really kind of starting to come to life and have a bit of a of a personality here. Just takes time to build everything up and that it's a white creature, but I don't want it so light that you're not gonna see kind of the details of it. So I'm gonna keep kind of adding adding some outlines and some darker things in with kind of some shadow colors. I just don't want it to be I don't want it to be too shadowy, so kind of working on a balance.
Yeah, I think a lot of people are afraid of making mistakes. And I, I think they think if they, they make one, that's it. And they've got to toss the whole drawing or the whole painting or whatever it is. Uh, and as I've done more and more art, I've learned that there's always ways you can fix things. Um, and that honestly, being that worried usually makes it harder and makes you more likely to make mistakes. But I think uh, being relaxed about it just takes takes time to get there. Um, but yeah, you try to learn with a sense of play and fun. That's that's a great way of putting it. That does make a huge difference. Um, and I, obviously, I do this professionally, but there's always things you can do. And that's one of the reasons I tell people if you're if you're really nervous about using real paint and materials and spending the money on that, to start maybe with some of the digital options because. Once you own an, an art tablet and the software, you can do as many endless paintings as you want. You can save copies of them. So it's a little less scary, I think, for some folks to do that. And art, the other thing to know about it is art and a lot of painting stuff. Sometimes they don't look good for anywhere from 50 to 80 to 90% of the process, it's going to look weird because it's not finished. Hello. Welcome. We have more people in the chat. It's always fun. I think it's, um, it's good for me to start streaming and stuff more too, because it, it gets me more comfortable with talking about what I do and, you know, we try to do some of the stuff at conventions, but if it's a bigger convention, it's really hard to have the time to do a painting, uh, to really show it. If there's a lot of people in the room, uh, they can't really all gather around. Um, and I've, I've actually turned down some invitations to do drawing workshops. Uh, if they want me to do a drawing workshop where they're only going to give me an hour. Aw, yay, people are actually using my chat. I'm so happy. But yeah, if they're only giving me an hour and you actually don't get everybody really settled and sitting for 10 minutes, and then you've got to wrap up 10 minutes early so the next panel can come in, um, sometimes people get frustrated because they don't have enough time to really learn. So I tell people, if you actually want me to teach a drawing workshop, you got to give me at least two hours um, so that people can kind of get past a little bit of their fear and stuff like that. And hopefully you guys are all surviving the craziness. Um, I, I know like being up in, in Washington state for at least one of you has got to be a little, a little scarier. Uh, Cause I know things are a bit more intense there. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of articles about, I think it's Florida because they keep having people who won't stop doing mega church services with thousands of people there. Even after being arrested for it, they want to go back and keep doing it. And it's not that I don't think church services are good, but there you could, you could stream one. You could do things to support people in their homes. Um, and still provide it as an essential service uh, without violating quarantine rules. So I don't know, I guess this brings out, I don't want to say the best and the worst of people, but a lot of interesting sides of folks. Um, yeah, there were a lot of people still going to beaches too, both in, uh, in Florida and in California. And then up until like, I think a week ago when they started really kind of bringing force in to chase them off. And I'm not saying we should be under like military control or anything, but this is getting a little silly. I mean, use your common sense, sit tight and we'll be okay. Uh, that's all we can really do. And I think it's good that we're doing something preventative because there've been, been many cases where no preventative things were done and a lot of people have died from various things. So at least we're, we're trying to reevaluate, I think on a daily basis and figure out what the best thing to do is. <laughs> I think that's all we really can do. And, and you find things that make you happy, uh, whether it's painting or, <laughs> Is it raining there? It's sunny and there's not a cloud in the sky here and there's birds chirping. It's starting to get pretty warm too. Uh, we've only had to use the AC a little. I try to use it sparingly. I have pretty efficient AC here, but that can get to be, still get to be a very high bill in the summer. 
I'm not one of those people who doesn't like rain, though. I, I don't find it depressing. I really enjoy it. We'll be heading into our, our monsoon season here soon, um, which is always an experience. It's a lot easier for me now that I don't have a dog. Uh, my dog used to get, as she got older, terrified of the thunder and lightning, and then that made, made monsoons less fun for us. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what was up with Florida or some other place. It's just weird. And I'm trying not to, you know, I'm not there. I'm not those people. And I'm sure that doesn't represent everybody. Um, I said the news is being a little weird and they'll, they'll put the most sensational things possible on it. So I try to take that all into, into kind of consideration and give people the benefit of the doubt. But I think that's all we can do right now. And especially if there's people who are not being considerate to kind of try to be extra considerate. Oh. That's awesome that you love rain. When I was in LA, the whole um, sad thing kind of was a big craze. So like the seasonal uh, affective disorder, which I legitimately believe there are some people who have it, but I think it was a lot more people who just, I don't know, wanted to get the treatments. It kind of became this, this bit of a, of a fad to have it. And you were supposed to put your head in a box of light during the winter months to prevent all the depression that was going to kick in. And I don't know, I don't have an issue with overcast days. Uh, I used to when I was younger, just because it made painting difficult, but I have a pretty good, a pretty good painting light now. So that's not as much of an issue. Let me zoom this back out a little bit. There we go. So you can see how quickly um, we've already kind of got a personality and I'm, I'm trying to match kind of the colors I used here, which I think I'm doing a good job on this print is a little darker. Uh, this is actually pretty bright red on the original, so I'm going to make sure that my my borders are brighter red. And I'd love to say I had some elaborate fancy plan when I started doing the borders like this. Honestly, uh, this was the first one in the series. I just did a bunch of scribbles and then merged them into the borders, and it looked like some fancy magical design, and I thought that was cool. So <laughs> I just sort of stuck with that. Um, so... I don't know. Sometimes you can, you can have fun and I'm not really an abstract artist, but I enjoy putting abstract elements in. Uh, and I thought that was really different when I did that about a year ago for the first one. And I was kind of excited about that. I, I love playing, especially the last year or two with, with borders on things. I've done gear borders on some of my pieces and, and things like that. And when we were talking on the channel, we've talked a lot about how long it takes to do something. Uh, painting like this takes a lot longer than some little ones I've been doing because even though it's a simple background, I am doing like a full background. I do all these swirly patterns and things. I've got to wait for different elements in it to dry. So it is more time consuming. Uh, and it's also a larger piece. This is usually about as large as I work. Uh, I don't like to go much bigger than this because then you're kind of leaning over and dealing with Stuff I've done a little bit, a little bit bigger on occasion, but it's also harder to mail if I'm selling pieces. So I've kind of found this to be the best option. And this is um, a standard size that that watercolor paper comes in. It's 11 by 15 inches, at least in the U.S. I know standard sizes are not the same worldwide, which is a whole other issue for for creators to deal with. Um, and they're not standard sizes that carry between art papers and printer papers, which is also annoying, <laughs> uh, let alone framing things. So it's definitely been an experience. So uh, it's a little different matching a painting in a series because you really want to be sure that you're you're kind of being true to the other paintings. So if prints or the originals are hung up together, they look good. But you also want to be sure that your individual painting, that things pop in it enough. Um, and I thought this would be a neat one to show because I get a lot of questions about, well, how do you paint something that's white? Uh, but if you look at anything that's white in real life, it's not really white because so much of the environment around it makes shadows. So essentially I'm just painting the shadows and I won't add a lot more to the face. This will this will stay lighter. Um, so it's, it's, it's almost like an inverse sort of painting. <laughs> uh, and it does take, it does take practice and time to kind of get, get used to it. 
and sometimes I will go darker right away if I if I really know exactly like I'm going to use this color for an outline but since I haven't painted a white fox before I was definitely starting with some lighter colors and then building in some of these outlines so um as I was talking about earlier I actually did a thing where I printed a very light circle on the paper so I could position this to match the other paintings. But uh, for the first painting, and what I do for a lot of paintings, um, some artists use a tool called a compass where you have a thing you stick in the middle and then a pencil and it draws a perfect circle around it. The problem I have with that is it often uh, makes a dent or a hole or damages the paper. And it's also hard to get it positioned correctly in relation to kind of the edges of paper if you want it more or less centered and stuff like that. So I do something a lot easier um, and some people refer to it as a cheat, but I have um, clear glass cooking bowls I use for making cakes. Oh yeah, your white cat is sitting there so you can be an example. Uh, one of the cool things you can do if you're not sure how colors would look uh, in an environment reflected on something, they have you do this in art school is you take a, um, an egg, like a white egg, not a brown egg, and you take a sheet of paper that is colored, uh, and then you put them under kind of a neutral light, and you can actually see the color from the paper reflected on the bottom edge of the egg. Um, things like that, they kind of, there's also lots of photos of stuff like that, so you don't have to do it yourself, but to kind of get an idea and, um, a lot of artists who've painted landscapes or creatures with ice and snow can tell you how much where they are is going to change the uh, the colors uh, because something that has is either white or or transparent in color uh, very much is going to pick up the colors of its environment and it's going to be very different <laughs> so And I certainly don't know everything about all the colors for uh, for painting. I, I've done a lot of painting. Um, the wonderful thing about, about Patreon especially is that it has me painting on such a regular basis. Uh, prior to that, I mainly did um, my art was sold through conventions, my website, and then Kickstarters. And the problem with that was is that if I was doing a book, uh, I wasn't necessarily going to get a lot of income from either the original paintings or the book until it was all done. So I had a very limited amount for what I could do for a book or project uh, because I needed to eventually get some money in for it. So that's why a lot of my early books are uh, 50, 100, 120 pages. But once we started doing Patreon, I was able to also um, either do longer books, like I've done a couple 300 page books. Yes, it's a kitsune. I know you would, I knew you would like that. <laughs> Hi, Rainbow Phoenix. Uh, but yeah, I was able to do some longer books and also to do multiple projects at a time uh, because Patreon is a monthly subscription service. So I get more uh, funds as I am creating and I also get more inspiration. I get requests, or, or in this case, this is uh, for a subscriber. And I've mentioned this a couple times as a subscriber in Germany. So this little guy is going to be making its way there to uh, complete the set of four paintings. And I'm very excited uh, about that. And I think this might be the best fox I've ever done. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, if you do one type of animal, dragons and cats, man, I can do those really easily. But um, but when it comes to like foxes and a little more, and there's a lot of similarity in um, foxes, dogs, and cats in anatomy. So that helps. But uh, horses are something I've always had to... To work at. And I don't know if I mentioned this when I was showing some of the digital painting, but the uh, the software I was using, um, Clip Studio Paint, one of the things included, even in the $50 like basic version of it, are models. And uh, you can download some more for free. There's some you can buy. But totally for free, you can not only get human posable models, just like you get a figure model in real life. They make like the mannequins, but they're included in the program. You can also get horse ones. So the last couple times I've done unicorns, um, you can look for photo reference or I have a lot of books on animals that finding the exact pose you want can be really hard. And I find for horses, I really need that reference. So I just went into Clip Studio Paint and um, put a horse mannequin in there and positioned it how I wanted and then looked at that to draw. And it really helped me get 
the exact pose I wanted the proportions correctly. So I love how that's actually, actually just something they include in the program uh, because there's programs like Poser where you have to buy an entire program just to have posable models um, in three dimensions where you can move a camera around them. So I was super impressed that it is included in that. And that's a good example of how even if you are working on something using real media, digital tools can still be really useful uh, for figuring those things out. Or you can go stand in front of a mirror yourself if you're doing human stuff or get a friend or family member to go stand and pose for you or hold their hands up or a lot of uh, artists doing more elaborate um, large oil paintings that I know will pay hundreds of dollars to begin with for a full photo shoot with models to get the poses for things like angels or mermaids, but then they're selling their originals for like eight or $9,000. So spending that much money, um, they're probably spending that much on the paint too. I mean, it can get very expensive. So they're just different ways to work. Uh, I made the choice of kind of staying in the more affordable range, both with the sizes I work in, the materials I use, um, I think it's better for me. It lets me do a lot more creatures and more design, but I think it also uh, is better for my fans because I loved a lot of fantasy art as a kid and owning an original just wasn't possible for most of the artists I love because they did work very, very large and in oils. And even then some of them did posters, which was cool because then you could get like a 10 or $20 poster or even a 40 or $50 limited edition print. I have a few of those, uh, but other artists, they just didn't, have anything affordable uh, that wasn't their market. And I made the decision that if a 10 year old soul saw my art and wanted a piece for their birthday, I wanted that to be something that they could get. Uh, and that everyone says, well, why is your art not worth more? And that's a, that's a choice that I make. Uh, if I can do 20 paintings a month or do a little less and do writing and things, and I can be making money off book sales. One of the things I do is we, um, we fund printing my books to do a bulk print run and that bulk print run, those people get special things. They get custom drawings on their books or discounts on the items with the books. They get signed stuff, they get personalized stuff, but then my books are available on Amazon and that's all print on demand. So if you order my book in the UK, it's going to be printed uh, somewhere in the UK by a print shop there. So you don't have to pay as much in shipping and it won't be signed or have the special stuff. Oh, that's really cool. I don't know. There must be a newer Magic the Gathering artist that you're mentioning because um, I mostly go way back for uh, Magic the Gathering knowledge since I played mostly in the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, but that is really cool. They made art reference packs for poses. Um, and I mean, there's there's a lot of the debate of like, well, what what technically is cheating in art? I'm not a big fan of tracing photos, even if you've taken the photos yourself, but there are many portrait artists who will project a photo that they have licensed to use. It's a photo they've taken of their the subject matter, or it's um, a photo they're allowed to use. And then they'll project it onto a canvas and trace it. So they don't have to do all the figure drawing and all that. And um, I get that. Like it's, there's nothing wrong. It's, I mean, even the taking of the photo and the posing of everyone for the photo and all that, that's all, it's all an art form too. Cause photography is also art. I just, it's not that I feel like it's cheating. I feel like you're not, you're, you're getting the camera's view more than the artist's view. I don't know. To me, uh, I am a much bigger fan of putting the time in to draw it out yourself. Uh, because it means you're really looking at the person or the animal. I looked at about a hundred photos of foxes, um, mainly National Geographic ones. But of course, this one has seven tails. <laughs> They're supposed to be the luckiest ones, seven and nine tails. Nine tails are like the the really high end <laughs> elder ones. But um, I don't know. That's, that's so much a personal choice too. Some people say you shouldn't ever use a ruler or a stencil or trace around a cooking bowl to get a circle. And really that's getting a circle is getting a circle. I don't really feel like that's any form of cheating. And I think the resulting picture is as good, if not better. So I think it's just a personal choice um, by artists, but I also think it's important for them to be 
pretty honest with what techniques they are using should that matter to people they're teaching or people who are buying their work. And sometimes if I'm doing pet portraits and I'm having a really hard time getting the pose right, I will take the picture of the pet in the computer, do just a trace line drawing so I can see what the line drawing looks like. And then I'll look at mine and kind of compare them and say, okay, what do I need to fix? Uh, but I still kind of believe in, in mainly drawing it out by hand. And I think that's, I don't know if that's just me. I think the imperfections and things like that make it better. Uh, and one of the trick is if you're getting a lot of imperfections, like you're feeling like the face on either a human or an animal is just really off and you can't figure out why, um, it's to hold your picture up to a mirror or turn it upside down. And, um, that's cool. Nobu Phoenix is talking about, um, this newer artist, Noah Bradley, who's, who's really providing, um, a lot of resources to other artists. And I love when artists do that. I think there's kind of two mentalities. There are some artists who, I don't know, they're, they're a little more insecure and they don't really want to encourage other people to create, but I truly think each and every person has something unique to share with the world. Um, whether it's stand up comedy or art that they do or writing that they do. So I don't ever feel like I'm, I'm losing fans or losing business. Uh, if I encourage someone else to make books or art or vendors, Convention I've been at, it's never cost me business, and I think it's it's a little weird that there are there are more people when I've done shows in like cities like LA because um, I used to live there that seem to have that mentality of I'm not going to tell you what paints I use or I'm not going to tell you what tools I use, and then here in Tucson most people are, are pretty good about encouraging each other. Um, I think out of this whole quarantine virus situation, nothing that's actually been really positive is we've had so many so many creators sort of networking with each other more uh to provide twitch streams we have all of our local djs are all supporting each other and moderating each other's twitch streams and encouraging each other and trying not to conflict when they're when they're scheduling nights of music so that there can be something almost every night um and you know that could be a competitive thing but it's not and i think that that's really awesome <laughs> I think that's really special. And I think everybody does have like their, their own eye, their own style, um, their own thing to give that, that can apply to almost anything. A lot of people think that they're not creative, but they might be creative just with something else that they do. Um, there's so many ways to be creative in cooking, fashion, food, um, music, just the way people dance is interesting to me. Uh, I love seeing that when we actually are able to go out to places, uh, dance and body language and stuff like that. But there's always ways you can be creative. Yeah, everybody really does have something unique to contribute. And one of the reasons I'm very firm about that and I get annoyed when someone says, oh, you're just, just naturally talented, you were just born with that, is because I wasn't born with that. Um, I was born really with two, two kind of natural talents. Uh, one of them is imagination. I've always just had an imagination, which is both a great talent. And you guys might hear some weird noise. I don't know if it's going to pick up because my window is open and the garbage truck is doing pickup outside. But um, imagination can be great, but it can also be terrifying because I had to work <laughs> some issues when I was a child of like imagining horrible things. If I heard about a murder, I'd be able to imagine that way too much detail. So that's not so good, but I always had imagination. And then I've always been kind of stubborn and that has served me really well because if there's something I'm not good at or that I can't figure out, I'm stubborn enough that I will keep trying. Uh, and I think that's, that's the biggest talent that I have because when I started drawing, I could not draw well. I could not paint well. I couldn't do, oh yeah, there's the garbage truck noise. I'll mute this first. All right, they're gone now. Um, but I couldn't do anything like what I'm able to do now. And this is just many years of practice. And with the internet, um, it's so wonderful. I was very lucky that, you know, I started drawing more seriously in the mid nineties and the internet kind of came into popularity and into accessibility at the time. So when I first started doing digital painting, my brother used to translate Japanese tutorials for me from the internet. But the fact that there was so much there that you could look up on how to draw things, that definitely encouraged me. Um, 
and I'll just keep trying, <laughs> trying to get something. I think if you care enough and you're, you're willing to work at it. Oh, I'm so happy we've been able to help you get exposed to, uh, to new music. I, I thought that there were some nights locally for themes I wouldn't like music wise that we never went to. And now I totally know I want to go to those if they get them started up again after this. Um, I think it's it's awesome to see not just so many of the DJs supporting each other, but different types of music. Um, I definitely found like five or six bands that I love that I had no idea I would love. So that's been really cool. And everybody's kind of different style. And even like, well, one of my favorite DJs um, is Plastic Disease, who you guys have heard me probably recommend a lot. But she's done Goth Nights um, on Twitch, and she's done like really cute plushy anime parties. So we've had, she likes to say she has many different personalities and she's trying to show them all. And I think that's great to show all those sides. I mean, I definitely do more serious artwork. I would count this piece on the more serious side. Uh, but then I've also done really goofy stuff, cartoony stuff. Um, to me, art is so much um, an exploration that I'm always trying to kind of learn things and I think sometimes it's bad because people people show up at a convention and are like I got a print from you five years ago my friend wants the same one and aside from a few really popular pieces I'm like well I do 20 paintings a month so I'm bringing different prints every year to shows because I feel like I've improved and learned and grown as an artist and then somebody wants something I did when I was 20 and I am almost 39 now so I don't really have those pieces out there anymore and I look at them and go I could do better so yeah, we actually put, um, and you're talking about making space to dance. We put, uh, I can't think what the app is called. I'll have to find it for you. We found a um, an app for our cell phones that does like, it'll it'll listen to the for the music and it will do uh, lighting effects on your screen or with your flashlight stro as a strobe light in time to the music. So you can do a light show at home uh, if you're listening to to music and you want that more that more feel of being out at a club we thought that was really fun there's a bunch of them i think daniel just googled strobe lights um and like the the google app store to find it yeah he's coming along pretty good and obviously this is a very a very stylized uh fantasy fox yeah um i can i have my phone here i can just tell you what the app is give me a second it's just called music strobe uh, and it's just a free one. So yeah, and it'll it'll just listen to whatever music you have on. So we turned off all the lights, had both of our phones doing light shows and had uh, the DJ stream coming in on, on our computers, which were on opposite sides of the room. So it was really cool. We got kind of a surround sound. And then you have our other friend who is a DJ. And for one of the events, um, they had set up a fog machine. They, they put up photos. Uh, they set up a whole fog machine in their living room to dance along and did like an entire club for just them at home. Um, so yeah, I, th I feel like this situation, while it's not great, is bringing out so much creativity in people. And that to me is really cool. Uh, it's pushed me to stream. It's, it's made me a lot closer to other creators. A lot of the DJs I was really kind of intimidated to talk to because I mean, come on, they're really cool. They're up there playing the music. And of course you don't really talk to them at events because they're busy playing music. So, uh, it's been kind of really wonderful to get to know them more as people, um, and they've kind of said the same thing. Like, it's been really cool to have that side of it uh, as at least something positive. And I'm not saying like, oh, wow, this is a great thing. But we might as well try to find some positive, cool things about it. We might as well find books we've always wanted to read or new writers or new TV series to check out. I mentioned, I think, in, in my Discord this morning. We were checking out this show and we didn't really have a lot of time to watch it and thought it was only okay. So we only watched the first few episodes on Hulu and then we ran out of other stuff. So we were, we were like, oh yeah, let's watch some more of that. And now I'm totally hooked on it. And it's called, I think it's called Case File 221 or N221, something like that. It is the most bizarre anime take on Sherlock Holmes. It is by, and I've seen every version of Sherlock Holmes ever done. This is the weirdest version ever. Uh, for starters... Sherlock is one of many detectives who live in a Japanese row house. And every time a case comes in, all the detectives compete to solve it. Uh, and there is a Watson. Uh, but then the row house is run by Mrs. Hudson, who traditionally in Sherlock Holmes stories, you may know is, is his housekeeper. 
Only in this case, <laughs> Mrs. Hudson is a very large muscular man who cross dresses. So it's a little bit different. Um, and it, it strikes a, a balance of really comedic moments and really serious, frightening crimes. I mean, they're chasing the first half of season one, they're chasing and trying to figure out who Jack the Ripper is, which is like a whole other non Sherlock Holmes related thing they threw in. So I, I guess you'd say it's it's loosely inspired by Sherlock Holmes, um, but I love how creative it is. And it's super weird. The first couple episodes, I was like, I don't know what I'm watching. I don't know if I like this, but now it's we're like halfway through season one and it's it's on Hulu. It's really um, grown on me and now I love it. <laughs> and I don't know if I would have gone back to that or had the time otherwise. So it's it's cool that I'm able to explore that a bit more. That's awesome. I have five people. So I guess um, still being pretty new, I think this is only my second or third week on Twitch. Um, the way Twitch works is you get followers, which are people who are following you so that they get notified when you stream or are just a fan of yours. So they get notified of new stuff that you do. And there's certain goals that you aim for as a Twitch streamer uh, that are a combination of things like how many hours you've streamed, how many followers you have, how many days a week you've streamed. And when you hit those goals, you kind of unlock more things. So when you first start out on Twitch, you can't, for example, offer subscriptions. You can't offer uh, anything for people to tip you if they like what you do. Uh, and then you have to unlock that, which I actually think is cool because it means you actually have to put some time in as a streamer to show that you're really going to commit to this and offer a lot. So we're actually really close to the affiliate goal, which I'm excited about. And I'm sure Rainbow Phoenix hit that a while ago because she streams way more than I do. Um, and I've actually been, my boyfriend streams too, and he doesn't tell people, I don't know, he just likes doing it, but he doesn't let people know they can go watch it. He streams video games, but uh, I was encouraging him to kind of tell more people because he was streaming, um, he finally figured out how to stream VR chat. Um, and just show some of the worlds in VR chat. And I don't do VR chat because A, I don't have a VR headset and you, you don't need one to do it, but it helps. And B, I get really motion sick. So if I put on his VR headset, I can do like the 10 minutes and then, then I am really, really sick. Um, and VR chat's a, I can only describe it as like the very early chat rooms on the internet that were just bizarre but as a more three-dimensional visual environment. But what's cool about it, what I do like about it, and I always am asking him to show me, is that there are, I think, thousands of different worlds that people have created, and you can just go visit them in VR chat. And they're three-dimensional worlds, and you can interact with them, and they are all assorted things. And so the one he streamed the other day, which I think is is still up on his, uh, on his stream, is there's a Studio Ghibli world, and you can actually go... Um, go to the bathhouse from spirited away. You can ride the train. Uh, Totoro's there just sleeping under a tree and you can take selfies with him. Kiki's flying around. Howl's moving castle is there. You can go inside it. Like he showed me that one. And I was like, how much time did somebody put in with 3d modeling and everything to make an entire world with all the characters from, from studio Ghibli films. And I thought that was really cool. So I told him like stream more, just show people some of these neat worlds because those of us who either don't have time or don't have VR or aren't sure if we want VR, uh, we'll really want to see all that stuff. And I mean, he's always encouraged me to kind of step out of my, my shy safe area and stream. So I'm really happy to, to be getting more comfortable with it. I still think it's weird that there's people I've never seen or met who are listening to me, but uh, it's not that weird, I guess, compared to the fact that I, I talk to people in, in written chat that way. I just not used to doing it where I'm talking and you guys are typing. Oh, thank you. I think I have to do kind of subtle color for this guy. I mean, I, I think some outlines are important, but it's because like the shadow version, this one, it's really, I mean, it's not really showing up totally right in the camera, but it's very kind of dark. Um, obviously because it's shadow, it's, it's a lot of blues and purples. So I really want this to kind of balance. And then if you hang it up with, this is the, the female version if you hang it up with this i want them to be able to face each other and have very similar colors so i'm trying to kind of match this color scheme to the lighter parts of her kimono <laughs> and um i don't think i'd ever done that much with kimonos before i did the two 
the two human forms for these guys. So I had to, to do some fashion research. Uh, I think that's one of the wonderful things about being a creator though, is that you can do all of that. And I'm probably going to stop soon because I'm not going to get this all done on, on stream. We've been in here for like an hour and honestly, I'm really hungry and I want to go order food because it's going to take time to get here. Um, I got a discount thing today for Grubhub. So I think I'm going to order pokey. We have a really great uh, Poke Bowl place that opened up like, I don't know, a month before quarantine and all that stuff started. So I'm trying to support them. Um, it's really hard, I think, on new businesses if you like just opened your doors. We're starting to build your, your following and then everything kind of hit. I know so many businesses are, are having a hard time. So I tried to get too stressed about mine because I'm hanging in there. I'm able to share with you guys this way. Um, we had a couple awesome new Patreon subscribers today. Oh, and I probably should mention this um, because I keep forgetting to. So one of the first uh, Twitch streams that we did, the Twitch streaming events, we did a two-day event on here where I drew, inked, and painted um, a little clockwork dragon on a 9 by 12 like watercolor paper. And a few people asked me if I'm going to sell that one. And I decided because of the state of things in the world that I would give that painting away. So I am giving that painting away the beginning of next month. And there are two ways you can get entered to win it. If you place any order in my online store at all, it can be for a teeny tiny thing. It doesn't matter. You're just automatically entered. And if you subscribe to my Patreon and you are a $5 or higher subscriber, you are automatically entered. And the reason I'm limiting it to that is that those are the people who most support what I do. Uh, so I really want to thank them. And so I'd like one of them to either a Patreon subscriber or somebody from my store who who's buying my work to, to win that. And if it goes well, I might do some more giveaways of paintings. I think that's uh, a fun way. You might get another dragon. <laughs> and if you already placed an order even before I put that up, as long as the order was uh, during the month of April, or as long as you are a $5 or higher Patreon subscriber at the end of the month, when we do the, the payment, that's like the May 1st payment, I'm going to enter you in there. And then you'll, I'm going to do a random drawing and I'll just let everybody know uh, kind of who wins and ask them for an address and everything. But with a smaller painting, it won't be too bad to ship and, Oh, you have a shop and let's earn your money. That's so nice. I think, <laughs> yeah, you could win an original. I think that'd be cool if we actually did, did at least a small original. I mean, not all of it be as big as that clockwork dragon, but even just something small every month for, for people who support what I do, because it means a lot to me. Um, especially like some of you guys, um, have been supporters of mine. I have a few, few people who've been there since like my very first book. And I was really still learning the workings of Kickstarter. I was still going to the post office. I wasn't even printing my own postage. I was taking packages to the post office, which I can't believe I was doing that six years ago. Um, I've learned so much. So, oh, and we actually hit another goal on our Kickstarter. I should mention that it's, uh, it's winding down, but we hit another goal. So I will be designing another um, of the clockwork creator kits for that too. I'm not sure. Doing this, I might I might actually do a fox. I was just gonna take some of my my existing clockwork and set it up for that, but I might actually just do a fox in the same pose and clockwork. I've done coyotes, but I don't think I've done a clockwork fox. Um, but yeah, I try to do a lot of different ways that you can get my work or be a part of my creative process. There's ways you can do it where like you tune into Twitch here and it doesn't cost anything. Uh, there's ways you can have more of a say in what I'll paint. Um, and get coloring pages and just be a part of that for a dollar a month, which is $12 a year on Patreon, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if a bunch of people do that, that really helps me out. <laughs> it helps pay for my paints and keeping my lights on and stuff like that. And one of the reasons I can do this for a living is that Tucson is incredibly affordable, um, to live in. And then we have a lot of amazing local businesses, things like Bookman's that, host events for artists and writers to come in the store and sell our work and talk about what we do. So I'm always worried if I get too much of an ego as a creator, but I, I try to have enough self-confidence in what I do. And then I also always really want to say thank you to all the people who get originals and who pledge to get my books and um, 
if you are wanting to get originals, uh, one of the things you can do is just become a $5 a month subscriber on Patreon for a month or two, because it, you can always change it back to $1 or something later. What it does is it gets you access to the subscriber only store. And I know we've had a couple of people subscribe in the last 24 hours. I have to go give you guys that access. It's on my to-do list for today. Um, and in that store, all of my, my newest paintings for that month, um, not the ones that are for specific people like this one is, but uh, about eight or nine paintings I do every month um, and other special products featuring those are in there and they're about 20% off. So if we like put a new piece of art in a t-shirt, it'll be in there and it'll cost anywhere from one to $3 less than it will when it goes to the public store. And so I give everybody there kind of who are my biggest supporters monthly, the first shot at, at getting some of my originals. And then, uh, and then if they're left over, they go to, kickstarters or to the public store because so many of you guys are the ones giving me ideas on what to paint we're actually i'm doing these ones that are going out um i can't do them too early because i had to wait for payments to come in um on the first but these are going out this week and then towards the end of the week i will be starting on all of the weird things you guys have been voting on for me to paint on patreon uh, which is fun, but I always want ways where even if you don't have any money, you can kind of see me create and take part in that. Um, and kind of make things accessible in different ways. So yeah, I'm trying to do a lot more with stickers too. Um, and I always try to offer prints with things. Sometimes it's hard because if I do like 10 new paintings, I don't know if I want to offer prints on all of them. Cause it's just a lot to, to put in my online store to add. I don't want to overwhelm everybody and it takes a couple minutes to like prep images and put everything in there so i try to to listen but resoundingly you guys got mad at me for not putting uh prints and stickers and things up of the lemon lime griffin we painted earlier this week so i will i will be seeing about that it'll go in the patreon subscriber store for a couple weeks and then it'll go up a little bit in price and i'll it'll move to the the main part of the store well with if i can if i can make people happy within reason um in an affordable way, I'm always going to do that. Uh, because I've been on the other side of it. You know, I don't, even now, I don't always have a lot of funds for things. Um, but I get to do something I love, which is awesome. And as long as I can keep it going, that's what I care about. I would rather make less money and have people who really love what I do able to afford my art than maybe just collectors and things. I do still offer things for collectors. I often offer special books and limited edition things and versions. I try to offer like a little bit of each um, so that both types of people can be happy. Um, and that's one of the reasons I love Twitch and Patreon and Kickstarter is because you guys get to get to give me your feedback and tell me if something's a good idea or a bad idea uh, and what I need to work on or change. So there's definitely, I never would have thought of doing games or playing cards or some of the things I've done with my art. If, uh, if I didn't have fans say, take all that art you're doing for your books and put it on playing cards and stuff like that. So yeah, that guy's on um, a stream from earlier. So there was a day I streamed twice uh, because I was just working on a lot of like Patreon backer paintings like I'm doing now, but they were smaller ones. I try to show mostly smaller ones on the stream because it's a little easier to fit them on here. If I zoom this way out, then you can't see the details. So uh, Zoom it back out now, probably, so you can see a little more of the whole, the whole piece or close to here. So what'll really punch this up when I'm done is adding all these, these red borders, which are not there. Oh yeah, you've been around. Rainbow Phoenix has been supporting since I did a Clockwork Dragons, um, but I think we actually met in person at least once before that because we went to the same game store for a while. Like I. Like once we met in person again later, I was like, I know I've seen you before. So, <laughs> well, that's not creepy. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I try to, I try to just have a range of things. And sometimes somebody will ask me for something uh, in a product with my art that just isn't that doable because not enough people want it. Um, but I'll, I'll always kind of keep a list of those things. Uh, for years, you guys asked me for coasters. And I kept looking into it, but they're just, they were either really crummy paper coasters that just weren't going to last, or I had to get ceramic coasters and I'd have to get 800 of the same design and they'd be very fragile to ship. So that wasn't very practical. Uh, so I had that coasters on my list for like six years. And then um, 
they started having coaster machines that are like button makers, but a lot bigger. And we were able to get one last year and now I can offer coasters. So a lot of times it's just, I have to wait for manufacturing options to catch up with requests I'm getting, but I do listen to all the requests and try to kind of keep them in mind. Um, And my general policy is also that I would never make or sell anything that I wouldn't buy myself as far as the type of product or the quality of it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a little flexible. Um, Obviously I'm not going to say wear every type of shirt that I design, but uh, within reason, I'm, I'm really picky about where I get things done just so um, if somebody gets something of my art, it'll last uh, that you'll be able to wear a shirt for three years before you really need to replace it and things like that. So I try to try to really keep that in mind with anybody who's manufacturing goods that have my art on them. I know a lot of you guys really like my play mats and mouse pads, and I did try a bunch of different companies before I found one that I felt like the quality um, was up there enough. So yeah, I'm just trying to show a little bit of, so this is how I'll finish it. I'll kind of do this background because I want to match this. And then the very last thing I'm going to do is be painting kind of swirls like this and all these big solid red areas, uh, which will really pop it out. But I think that's probably going to be it for the stream for today because as I said, I need food. I'm sure my boyfriend is waiting patiently in the other room and wants some food. So, Oh, yeah, you probably went to the game store like right after that because I that's how I know like uh, Fez and a bunch of the other uh, local people from Magic the Gathering and like the Warcraft game and some of that stuff. Um, I used to be a little bit of a of, like a tabletop, a tabletop gamer, but it and now I make tabletop games and I just don't have time to play. But yeah, it was a it was a money and expense thing. Uh, and then people got a little too serious for my taste <laughs> as far as Magic the Gathering went. There was a little too much everyone building the same decks it wasn't as much fun so i just mainly didn't have the time uh because i'm doing this all the time so kind of switched over to uh things that got me moving when i was taking time off so things like going dancing because or or walking or hiking because i don't get a lot of exercise when i'm doing this um and yeah i used to i used to vend at phoenix comic-con and some of that stuff too um and I know that got delayed as well as well this year. I just haven't been as much because the expense to be there has been not um, not really worth it for not just money, but like for fans, I can't really ask them to spend uh, that much on a convention just to come see me when I, they can see me for free at Bookman's or Festival of Books or for 10 to $20 at a show. So I try to keep in mind uh, the type of events I'm doing and kind of pick them that way. Um, I did secure booth space for the reptile show this fall. I'm hoping things will be back to normal by then. They, they pretty much have to be pretty soon or we're all going to lose our minds. So, uh, for those of you who live in Arizona, the Tucson reptile show is one of the top reptile shows in the world. And if you're okay with snakes and spiders and all kinds of cool reptiles, you can pay, t- I think it's 10 or 15 bucks and it gets you in both days. And you can, you can go see, uh, even before I, I, now I sell there, but I used to just go to attend and do drawings. Uh, you can go see just some of the coolest things. You can see a King Cobra. You can see chameleons and they actually change color, which is so cool. Uh, kids here are so lucky to have that. So that's every October and hopefully we'll be back to normal by then. And, and I can see people there. And for those of you who are online, maybe we'll try to do internet's terrible there. So I will not be able to Twitch stream from there almost certainly. Um, I don't know. We'll see, but maybe some photos. Um, yeah, I was surprised because Tucson's not a huge, a huge city. Tucson is, um, if you take all the surrounding kind of outlying metro areas, it's maybe a million people, which is, is big, but it's not compared to like Phoenix or LA. It's not that big. Uh, and yet we have one of the top book festivals in the world, which sadly this year was canceled and I was heartbroken. Um, but it will be back next year. And it has, um, like our reptile show doesn't seem that big, but I guess the reptiles there are just all really, really rare. Um, I actually saw a couple years ago, and I don't know if they'll have it again. I saw a white cobra, which I don't even know existed. I, I thought that was, I took, I took as many photos as I could get. It was kind of reflective glass. So it was hard to get that. I was like, whoa, I really want to do a dragon inspired by a white cobra because 
that's just amazing. They have uh, rhinoceros iguana. He's one of my favorite critters because he looks like a dinosaur. Uh, and then for kids, they have a whole area where you can actually go pet alligators and sometimes Komodo dragons and stuff like that. So kids here are so lucky. And they have their mouths secured and they have handlers, so it's very safe. Uh, but the fact that they have an event like that, and some people go to buy reptiles, others just go to buy t-shirts or just to see all the critters. And I, the, the fact that there's something like that and it's 15 bucks to go to is absolutely amazing to me. Um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna, gonna be doing, um, more stuff. Um, like I said, it was festival books was my big spring show. So I don't usually do a lot of other spring events because that one's so big. Uh, but next year, I don't know. Everybody keeps bugging me to do our steampunk convention and I'm trying to figure out some way to be a part of that. It's just usually back to back weeks with the book festival. So I have to figure something out with that. Uh, but this fall, uh, I'm still waiting. I think we're also waiting to hear what's happening with Tucson comic con, but it'll probably be a part of that. I will definitely be at the reptile show. Uh, as soon as things have kind of settled more, I will definitely be at more bookman's events, um, and all that stuff. So. Well, sometimes like it doesn't matter if it's small, if it's a really interesting thing. We have a small museum near me that a lot of people in Tucson have never been to. It's only been open for maybe five or six years. And so to us, it doesn't seem like that big a deal. But I guess if you're visiting, we have one of the most famous museums in the world. It's been on a number of British documentary shows, uh, and it is a cavalry museum. Uh, and it has very rare cavalry uniforms. It has saddles. I've been there once. It's one of the coolest things I've actually, and I don't have a huge like military interest, but you can see all these uniforms over time and the designs and how they changed. We get to see, they have a, um, a saddle there that was designed to hold a huge shortwave radio because they used to have to try to get that up on Hills to get, um, like a signal and the only, and it, I mean, this thing was probably like three or four feet across this radio is huge. They had to have a saddle that a horse could, could carry it up uh, a hill because they didn't have off-road vehicles and some of the things we have now, um, just really cool stuff. And it's not a big museum. It's, um, it's a couple of rooms, uh, but it's, it's really famous because it has such rare things in it and it's such an unusual museum. So um, that's about, I don't know, six minutes from my house. It's next to, um, our bizarre mini golf thing with a giant castle and our fake wild west town. Uh, so we have, we have some weird things right down my road. There's also a giant T-Rex, um, in front of the McDonald's down the road for me. So Tucson's a, a weird place, but I love it. So yeah, once things settle and we're allowed to travel again, uh, those of you who don't live here, if you can get here for like festival books or the reptile show. Uh, the events are cheap or free, so it's just travel cost, and they're they're really wonderful. I was thought I'd be here two years, and here we are, thirteen years later, and I'm not going anywhere. So you guys are stuck with me. Uh, but it's been such a, a wonderful experience and a pleasant surprise, and there's uh, absolutely amazing not just for for DJs, but just live music scene here as well. We have a ton of festivals related to that. We have a couple of street fairs. Like, there's so much stuff here. I usually can't go to most of it, so. Um, anyway, now that I've talked to you guys to death about Tucson and the reptile show and all of that, I will definitely be at stuff this fall. And for people who can't, uh, ever come to stuff here, I will try to get a lot of reptile photos. Uh, I try to always take a bunch every year and, and share those. And, and maybe we'll try to get enough internet connection that we can stream a little bit of, um, of what the event is like. I don't know. I don't know. There might be legal issues with filming there and things like that. So we have to be careful if we're if we're maybe doing it before it's officially open to the public, we can do something with that to kind of show the booth and kind of what the show's like. But I don't know, the internet there's usually, the internet and phone connections there can be a little iffy, so we'll see. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll hopefully be able to show the, the finished version of this at some point. And um, I think we have five days, it might be six days, five days left on the Kickstarter if you're interested in coloring books or coloring stickers or magnets that's all going on and i do a lot on patreon i do a lot on my website i'm on facebook i'm on discord and all those links are on my twitch page and i'm always super happy to hear from people i'm always happy to kick somebody an email with the brands of paint i use in case you missed that in a video or any of that stuff uh, so 
you know, there's always a lot of questions. That is really cool that you have a hobbit house <laughs> in your neighborhood. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I don't think we have a hobbit house here. We have some weird stuff, but no hobbit house. So uh, that's that'd be cool because I don't want to go draw there because I love I love weird little houses and trees and hills and stuff like that. So. Um, and yeah, if you if you have tuned in and you're not already following me on Twitch and you want to, I would suggest it because it'll let you know when I'm streaming again and uh, just all the other stuff that I that I post if I post more videos and things like that. So we just need to get, I think it's like seven or eight more followers and we hit the affiliate goal, which is cool. So thank you guys for tuning in and I'm going to go get myself some lunch and do more painting and shipping and stuff for patrons and lots of work, but food first. So uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope we'll see you all again and that you're hanging in there and ha hopefully having a, a good day uh, and some positivity and things like that. And maybe I've been able to add to that a little bit, which I would be super happy about. So that's it for today. And I'm going to sign off.